Hey everybody, it's Dr. V and I'm here today with the wonderful Sherry from the NFGC Tarot. Say hi, Sherry. Hi. Um, <laughs> this is both of our first time collaborating, so there might be some glitches, just be prepared. Um, but Sherry, if you're not familiar, is um, I'm gonna just fangirl for a minute, so you guys are just gonna have to bear with me. Um, when I first started watching <clears throat> YouTube videos, Sherry was like the first person that I, one of the first people that I connected with. Um, I loved her reading style, her energy, um, and now I have her cards, and so I'm excited about that. But if you haven't followed her channel, I strongly recommend that you do. And um, yeah, we're just going to kind of jump in. Sherry, let me go ahead and turn it over to you. You can say a few things, and we'll... Oh, hi, Lisa. I've been so excited about this, waiting for this to happen. I'm Thank you so very, very much, and I'm so happy to be here today. And I love you, girl. I Thank love you. you. Um, rock. <laughs> so I guess uh, what I'm going to do is read the first question, and then yep. we'll kind of go from there. Sure. Okay. I'll kind of just really, really quickly, I'll just let people know if they're not familiar. What we did was we posted on our pages and asked people to submit questions. And so these are questions that are for the collective, not individuals. Um, so hopefully they will resonate and apply to a lot of people because I know a lot, most people, many people go through similar things. So we're going to read the questions and then we'll each pull a card or two. Um, I'm using Sherry's deck. Are you using your own deck? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> and so... Let's see how this happens, how it works out. I'm, I'm anticipating a lot of magic. So go ahead, yeah. Sherry. Awesome. Okay. It says, uh, from Be Love, uh, what happens if the divine feminine rejects the divine masculine, masculine sexual offers because she has more worth than that? So what I'm kind of feeling with that is I think she kind of answered her own question there. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? Yeah. Uh, think you know, so. she, right? She's kind of rejecting the offers because she has self-worth, right? She's not doing it just for the sexual uh, connection, right? right? Connection goes deeper than that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, and it's about like standing in your own value. So I think what she's saying is like, what happens? How does the masculine respond to that? Um, right. So let's see what we get. And what happens if, she, okay. All right, so let's see. <clears throat> Contemplation. And oh, I got the cherry on it. Okay. Yeah. Let's so see. I kind of hear like both of these cards together. What I'm feeling is just like that, that there's a period of contemplation about what am I going to do if I really want this person in my life, then I need to do something different. It kind of gets them, you know, for a lot of them, it can motivate them to get off their ass. What are you thinking? Right. What are you feeling? Yeah, exactly. I'm also conflicting energy as well. You got mm -hmm. the chariot, which is taking control and moving forward, but then you also have this forced stop with the Seven of Pentacles. It's like, think about what you're doing before you do it, right? Yeah, don't just uh, react on something out of an emotional, you know, connection kind of thing. Um, huh. But what does that have to do with sexuality? Well, I, I'm feeling that she's reserved, she's, you know, pulled back, she's not fully giving herself to the connection, she's thinking what if too much, possibly? Yeah, she, yeah, for sure, and definitely, and maybe um, putting a little bit too much um, pressure on the situation. Right. So I'm wondering right. if it's like um, taking a step back, the contemplation can be about taking a step back and kind of just sitting with, what is it that I'm working toward? What is it that I'm hoping to accomplish? Um, Am I doing this reactively out of a space of um, fear mm -hmm. or like un unmet expectations? Or am I doing this because I am believing and standing in my, in my worth? Because that's a different type of energy. One is like manipulative. Yeah, absolutely. And one is like just truly standing in your power. Totally, totally agree with you. Absolutely. Do you want to move on to the next one? Yeah, let's go. Um, this next one is from Full Moon Child 555. And it says, how far behind usually are the divine masculines? I know time's an illusion and free will is always involved. Do they see signs like angel numbers or our names, et cetera, soon after we as divine feminines know about them? Okay. And um, that's a big question. So we'll just kind of say like the first one is how far behind. Um, <clears throat> and that's... um. I don't know if that's even something that can really be answered, but I'll right. try. So yeah, for me, I think that 
is an illusion that we're actually awake <clears throat> at the same time. Um, we're just expressing it in different ways. You know, yeah. uh, it may seem like your masculine is not awake because he might be pulled back a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of in observer mode, I think, but I think we're all at the same level. If you view yeah. somebody as being less than you are, then you're putting yourself at a higher yeah. uh, level, right? And so the masculine kind of looks at you on this pedestal and doesn't feel like he matches up, right? So he can't be open to it, I think. Yeah. Um, I think you're right about that. I agree because I don't believe in like the hierarchy, like that one person is more involved or aware. Um, masculine and feminine energy ex express their growth differently. Um, mm. their, their, you know, feminines might go meditate and do yoga, whereas masculines might en go in the garage and work on their car. Right, exactly. So what do you have? So the grand awakening card fell out. Yeah, just, perfect. Exactly. Right. So this is reviewing your life, realizing that it's just an illusion. You create your own reality. Okay. From foundation, which is yeah. structures, right? It's collaboration, it's connections. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you create your own reality. Um, and so that's exactly what I'm seeing there. She's doing all this within her own mind and creating it within herself, but it is it actual reality. Um, in terms of the numbers, yes, you know, you see those synchronistic signs and that's meant to awaken you to something other than yourself, that there's a divine force, there's something in there, you know, guiding you, awakening you. And so when the Grand Awakening card pops out, that's kind of saying, yes, he's seeing the signs and so are you, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. I think that for most of them, if you talk to uh, divine masculines that are, uh, that they also see the signs and they see your name and they the, the experience of the dreams and the uh, travel and all of that stuff. So I feel like absolutely. And I feel like this from foundation <clears throat> card for me, just the energy that I'm getting from it, from this in relationship to this question is about that their firm foundation just looks different than your firm foundation and that we have to create space for that and for the um, for them to be and express themselves the way that they are ra rather than according to our expectations i think that Absolutely. we can really limit that and if it doesn't look the way that we think it should look then we get kind of caught up in it so exactly. yeah, yeah yeah i hope that that answers that do you want to jump into the next one okay um so this is from lady lioness uh, thanks for the opportunity are there clear signs to know if you are the karmic or the soul twin flame relationship? Confused blue hair, Leo woman. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, well, what does it feel like? You know, um, I think karmic partners, you, you just kind of know you're stuck in that relationship, right? Yeah. You know, soulmates are different from twin flame relationships. And that you have tons of soulmate connections, whereas twin flame you only, I think, have one, right? That you are a mirror image of. So, yeah, I think you, that's a question you need to ask yourself. Mm -hmm. right? So, I think that for me, I always say like the karmic relationship, like you never get ahead in the karmic. Mm -hmm. You're you're always it's always a struggle. There's always like two steps forward, three steps back. Um, it feels like your money's always funny. You're you're like things just aren't ever working out. It's like bad luck everywhere, um, and it doesn't feel good. It's it's intense. It's like there may not be a lot of drama per se. There are there often is, but it's more like you just don't feel like juicy and alive. Mm -hmm. um, another differentiation that I think that people often miss is, I, and, and this is just my belief system, is that um, I, twin flames, in my belief, are never, there's never like intentional abuse or harm. Um, mm -hmm. There might be harm that's caused by unconsciousness and lack of awareness and old patterns and things like that. But when I hear people saying like, my twin flame did X, Y, and Z, and it was like harmful, I often wonder if that is not a karmic situation that's um, that yes. they're taking. Exactly. And Go ahead. I'm going to be quiet and let you talk about what you pulled. Uh, just that, you know, a twin flame connection, you feel that love. It, uh, it opens your heart chakra. Yeah. You know, it's, it doesn't ever go away. It seems to always get more and more intense. So you feel more and more love for this person, even though, you know, their actions might hurt you. Yeah, exactly what you said. It's not an intentional thing. And it's kind of interesting that the high priestess, popped out mm -hmm. uh so that's 
you know, the goddess of uh, the subconscious mind, uh, listening to your intuition, mm -hmm. uh, having foresight, what do you feel? What is um, your dreams, your subconscious thoughts telling you exactly? So to, you need to follow your intuition, which is basically what I said. At the beginning. Yeah, right. Sorry, my dog is barking in the background. <laughs> Okay. Um, and, and interestingly, I got the the ego. Yeah, the yeah. double. And so I feel like that is a huge thing because again, wow. do what? I said, wow. Yeah. That's exactly wow. Karmic energy right there. The right. ego for sure. Yeah. The ego, the to the trapped, because you think about the devil energy and it's like bondage, it's trapped. It's like um I often think also with um <clears throat> with uh karmic relationships that things often go really really fast whereas like people will um i've noticed this a lot where people will like meet a karmic and then they um get pregnant really quickly when they weren't planning on it and things like that where there's like external bondages that keep them stuck and so absolutely not that i'm yeah. calling kids bondage or anything no 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 I, yeah I told, everything happens for a reason i yeah. you know i know and can relate to that yeah, experience. My first marriage was just not a healthy situation whatsoever. So, yeah, there. Yeah. I was kind of like in it all of a sudden, and you know, I, I have this life with this person, and do I? Am I in love with this person? You know, probably not at the time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and I would never change it because my my kids are absolutely right. gorgeous and beautiful souls. That yeah, right. Same thing with me. Same. My both of I have two kids with my ex, the karmic partner, and I'm like. I, yeah, it was a very similar energy. So anyway, let me jump into the next question, okay. which is from a uh, starseed healer. And she says, he or she says, we talk all, we all talk about having telepathy with our twin, but never any examples. Um, and then she kind of goes into like her own description. So we're, I'm just going to leave it at that. We all have talking about te having telepathy with our twin, um, but never examples. So what kind of examples can you give or do you want to give? Oh, the 1111 thing is really big for me because uh, uh, I just, I feel him in that moment. It's like a light goes off for me. And I don't, you know, I, I can't say for sure if he does, but uh, maybe sexual um, feelings. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm thinking of like, at one point, mine told me about a very vivid dream that he had and i was like i'm pretty sure that wasn't a dream i'm pretty sure that was like astral projection <laughs> you know that's because it felt that way yeah. um there was another time that i'm thinking of in particular where this was right after we had gone into separation and i had a, a dream i mean it was a vivid dream and i but i don't i feel like it was telepathy because it was like we were sitting and having a conversation and i very re vividly remember him saying to me I know this is difficult. I just need the space to work this out on my own. Mm -hmm. And I remember it, like, I remember literally I woke up the next day and I had such a sense of peace and release that I was like, okay, just need to do your own thing and work this out on your own. Whereas, um, and I feel like that's when you can feel the telepathy because it resonates as real as if you were having a conversation with someone and it's less like, you know, wishes and fantasies. Yeah. You gotta be freaking kidding me. I swear you cannot make this shit up. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. But I, I got the Grand Awakening card again. Oh, no. 11 11. Wow, that's crazy. Wow. Um, yeah. <laughs> Seeing what is reality and what is an illusion. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I'm kind of blanking on this. I'm going to pull a card. I. Yeah, I think that there's like when there's signs and synchronicities that go along with the telepathy. So it's like you may have like the thought of the telepathic communication. You might then you'll see signs and synchronicities. Um, is what I'm feeling really strongly. What do you What are you getting? Um, so I have the sacral chakra, the strength card, also. Uh, what am I feeling with this? You know. Usually I see sacral chakras as being uh, a blockage of some kind. Mm -hmm. And the strength card is humbling yourself, um, controlling your urges. Like, what does that have to do with telepathy and your twin? Yeah, I don't know. Um, See, what I'm feeling after I hear you interpret that is what I'm getting is that it's about, like you said, controlling your urges. 
and uh, mm -hmm. being humble is recognizing that sometimes we have to learn to differentiate between our own wishful thinking, you know, controlling your urges um, and, mm -hmm. and feeling what is really real and how you feel it's really real is the same way that you can intuit anything is that you know it in your gut, you feel it in your, it's like you, it brings a sense of peace. It brings a sense of, um, yes, yes. Yeah. awesome, awesome, exactly. You feel that emotion, you feel that that warmth, you feel that comfort. Yeah. Um, almost like they're there with you always. They, they, they never leave you. They're just they're there like a warm blanket. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's like you feel that warm embrace that you, you feel that that's, uh, that's the best way I can describe it is that when I've had those conversations with mine, I, I feel that like that warm fuzzy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. I'll always be with you no matter what yeah. happens in your life. I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just yes. gave me Oh. I just got goosebumps. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. Okay, so next, where, let's see, where are we? So, uh, H. Ada, uh, I can't see your last name, sorry. Uh, how can twin flames leave fears of the future plans? Example, career and past hurts. Example, from fam family and karmics and move forward, especially when these fears and hurts are causing stagnation, anger, and resentment. Okay, the fears of the future hmm. and the past and move forward. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what this whole thing about, you know, is about. It's triggering, it's facing your fears, it's overcoming, it's, you know, feeling like you're in a safe space in a karmic partnership, but in reality, you're not living life fully. Yeah. <clears throat> right, and so, when these fears and hurts cause stagnation, anger, and resentment. But this is all you doing that, right? You're feeling those emotions, those hurts, the, yeah. the, the stagnation, the anger, the resentment. That's all coming from you. So you can't really blame somebody else for it. Right. Um, you know, you move at your own pace and you will both arrive at union together at some point, right? It's like you're walking together basically hand in hand. Does that make sense? Okay. And I think it's about like forgiveness, you know, it's about, we, we tell ourselves stories about things. So if you're telling yourself stories about people and the way that they treated you, I'm not saying that it's not real. I'm saying that we have to sometimes examine if the story that we're telling ourselves is serving us or if it's causing us harm. So what did right. you get? Ah, awesome. That's beautiful. Heart chakra. Um, so I got zero point and the ice queen. Yeah. So Love it. The ice queen, it, wow, you know, that's perfect for the energy that she was describing, yeah. resentment, anger, stagnation, you know, just having this bitter kind of feeling about the whole situation, right? But the other card is zero point, the fool card. So this is about letting go of all of that, yeah. returning to that state of purity, of innocence, no expectations whatsoever, and love in your heart. Allow yeah. love to guide you. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. Oh, here. Great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Christina wants to know what kinds of things psychically can twin flames do, such as astral project, switch bodies, etc. Okay. Right off the bat for me, um, when I'm meditating, I'm in a space of my own. Um, I kind of allow you know, the astral projection or um, whatever you want to call it to bring me to wherever I need to be. So if I happen to see my, my twin during that time, then I allow it to be. I, I don't control where I go when I'm meditating, if that makes any sense. So I've never actually switched bodies with anybody. Okay. Um, I almost feel like that would be invading their, their space. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. I've never switched bodies either, but I have, ha I definitely feel like there's been astral projection. Um, but I'm with you. I try to be like, I don't do that. I, I'm very careful about that because I don't want to invade um, someone else's privacy and space, which is why I don't do like, I don't even look, I personally, I don't even pull cards about my counterpart and what's going on um, yeah. in the situation because it feels too invasive. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So. That's exactly it. Like I know they're there, they're with me, and that's all I really need to know. I don't, I don't care about what's going on in their personal yeah. life. Um, but I got uh, two pentacle cards, so 3D reality, phys physical reality. So we got the 
retirement, which is the Ten of Pentacles, and reciprocation, which is the, the Six of Pentacles. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so she asked, what kinds of things physically can the twin flames do? Physically, what I'm seeing here is building a life together long term, you know, connecting, having that reciprocation of energy, even exchange of energy. But that's in the 3D reality. That's not necessarily in the 5D astral plane. So, um, oh my God! <laughs> I was waiting for that moment because, like, <laughs> I had the same response. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, I swear you can't make this up. This is amazing. <laughs> oh my God, that's so crazy. Okay, so what do you think on that? <laughs> so, yeah, just sharing, eh? Um, being open in the 3D reality, but I don't know how that affects the, the astral projection. Well, I think in the, like in the psychic plane that that giving and receiving and that flow is the same thing is that we can, I feel like what this is saying is that we give and receive energetically, psychically as well. And so that's why I always tell people like, mind your thoughts about your twin flame, about what you're, what you're thinking about them, how you're feeling about them what you're projecting out there, because even if you're not saying it, they can feel it. Right. So they, that's that recipro the, like, reciprocity, that give and take that uh, just like you can feel some th sometimes when they're feeling things, they can also feel when you're feeling things. Yeah. And so I feel like psychically, and that's what people, so many people don't understand on this journey is that we are always connected. And because we're always connected, because we are in that energy of exchange, that we give what we're, we get what we give. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, that's what that feels like to me. So I feel like different people have different abilities. Some people can astral project. Some people can, you know, there's different spiritual abilities that people have. And so I don't know that twin flames necessarily have like a set, you know, specific set of giftings. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like psychically what this is saying really is that we're, we're always energy exchanging. Okay. Yeah. And um, for some reason, I just had this vision, like, for me my, and my twin, we kept on connecting, reconnecting all throughout our life. My twin flame connection has been a lifelong journey. And we would show up in different spaces at the same time. You know, and, it, <clears throat> and it's like, it felt like it was, it was set up. It, you know what I mean? It was just too weird uh, that we ran into each other during this time. So uh, I think that kind of goes along with what you're saying you have that intention, you, you, you set that intention, and then it kind of all plays out in the 3D reality. And I, I kind of think that's why the Ten of Pentacles also showed up because it shows that long-term, you know, plan that's been set in motion. Yeah. You know, we yeah. just kind of- It's find. interesting because I know I have a, a, a friend here um, who is in a, a twin flame and, he and his uh, counterpart, they met early in life and separated and went their separate ways, had their own families and they did all, you know, and now in their, you know, sunset years are finally together and finally like in union. And it, but it took literally like 20, 30, 40 years to get to that point. Yes. And so, yeah. yeah, it's a life, it's a lifelong journey. It's well, it's an eternity journey, but yeah. For sure. So I'll read the next one then. Or? Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, can a divine feminine be stronger or be strongly in her masculine energy, uh, separating from husband, karmic, uh, changing career, and the divine masculine, also mainly in the masculine energy at the same time, hanging on to karmic, not coming forward? I would actually say hanging on to the karmic and not coming forward feels more like a feminine energy than masculine. <clears throat> masculine energy is forward charging, is taking steps and moving ahead. Uh, not taking action, being receptive is more of a feminine energy. Yeah, absolutely. Being open to, to it. But um, I find myself, I'm a lot of the times I'm in a masculine energy, uh, less than a feminine um, I'm the breadwinner. I'm the one that takes care of the, you know, the bills, the house and all that other stuff. Right. So I have to be in that energy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as far as hanging on to karmic partnerships, it's more of a feminine, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Yeah. And I think that people like what we all embody masculine and feminine energies. And so, mm -hmm. some, so yes, you can, sometimes your, your masculine can be in the masculine and you're in the masculine at the same time. You may have, you know, that, that creates a lack of polarity with each, with mm -hmm. the connection, but people mm -hmm. flow. Energy is not static. You know, energy is not something that just stays a certain way. It flows. It's dynamic. Yeah, absolutely. What'd you ah, get? Um, I got Nirvana. Are you kidding me? And the Kurt Cobain car? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, this is killing me. I, this is amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing that I... I my chair, I swear. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so yeah, it's like um what's really catching my eye is on on uh, my card I have uh two halves of one body where both you know that whole being um yeah, and just being in oneness in totality with the universe with all. You know what I mean? There's Maybe we shouldn't even say there's a masculine and a feminine aspect to us that we are, you know, just one being. Yeah. Right. If that makes any sense. <laughs> well, yeah, it does because that's really what we are. Is that that's and my my belief is that the whole purpose of this journey is to get us into that state of inner of the inner marriage, the mystical marriage between yeah. masculine and feminine, which leads to inner wholeness. Um, yeah, that's my yeah. belief that's system true. around that, and so I feel like. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still like I'm taken aback by that Kurt Cobain Bain and Nirvana. What the hell? I'm telling you. That, well, that's what's so like I love doing this because I, oftentimes people are like, "Did you like? Is that for real? Or is, are you guys just like pulling cards?" And like people are literally sitting here watching this happen in real time, and we're like on opposite sides of. <laughs> I love that. Your artwork is amazing, by the way. Thank you. I need hashtag all of it for my house. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so let's go ahead. I'll jump into the next one because that was just too. Yeah, that kind of just threw me off. Just, so, uh, but yeah, we have that major cycle, right? Yeah. Like you said, we're, we want to attain that. We want to reach that level of completion. Yeah. Reaching that honesty. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so Gwendolyn says, if we choose to walk away, and I mean literally close the door, block, delete, 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 to work on our mission solo when being called to, is that part of this mission as well? There was no way for us to be together. <clears throat> okay. Um, I feel her closing doors immediately. Yeah. Lock, you know, block sure. yourself off from the connection completely. You're, you have expectations. You feel that you know, if, if you keep that connection, then it's going to hurt you in some way. You shouldn't block ever, right? Um, you know, always end up regretting it later anyway. Yeah. yeah. Well, and yeah, I don't think you need to block somebody to work on your connection. You yeah. Know, or to work, I'm sorry, to work on yourself. I feel like my belief is that you keep the door open. Um, yeah. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to come back together and like be rom romantic or whatever. And I feel like that is one of, again, one of those attachments to expectations. So what if your um, person is in a situation or you're in a situation that you can't necessarily be together in this reality? Does that mean that you can't be connected? Um, mm -hmm. Is blocking them an act of self-preservation or is it an act of um, self-protection? Right. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And it, that's kind of going along with the card. So I got uh, the crown chakra, right? So this is all knowing, uh, connect, what? That's exactly <laughs> oneness being in the zone and the zero point. Yes. Mirroring each other perfectly. Yep. That's wow. Well, uh, so your higher self knows um everything right you need to be able to connect with your higher self rather than being in the the body in the 3d in the physical reality and have you know the physical reality make those decisions for you it's all about consciousness being aware being awake being in the now right i just have to show you this because this card literally popped out you oh my you're, God. you're not kidding you, 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 you can, when you watch the video you'll see my face when it popped out because i was like oh my God. Um, so I feel like wow. so 
and a lot a lot with what you're saying and it's also about having the faith you know the the fool is someone who's like taking that leap of faith and who doesn't necessarily need to um have all the answers before taking that step and when we you know so we have to continue to stay in that not being a fool like being like not using wisdom yeah. and discernment but recognizing that we're dealing with this like this is like a cosmic spiritual connection that we're trying to understand with the finite human mind. Exactly. And we're not exactly able to do that. Mm -hmm. exactly. So it requires just being able to be like, um, you know, right. walking and walking the path and just going where it leads you. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so I don't know. Okay. Uh, so is this Magdalene? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Uh, how do we know when, when to keep waiting and holding space for the divine masculine to return and finally reveal their true feelings? And when do we just let go and move on? It's so hard to keep waiting and waiting. So again, that kind of goes along with the last um, question. You know, it's the waiting, it's the holding on, it's the blocking, it's all these actions in the 3d reality that is blocking it no matter what you know it's that being in that head space you need to be you know in complete zero you know the fool return to that innocence that purity right. you're not having expectations not wait for anybody you know look to your to yourself uh and love yourself focus all that attention on yourself instead of on the masculine right um, and I, I would say just right off the jump, this is, I would say you don't ever wait, like never, ever, ever live your life on pause waiting for somebody else. Um, <clears throat> you go live your life. You do your best thing, right? Mother earth, establish yourself. Um, never, ever wait. Yeah, absolutely. So the queen of pentacles is somebody who's successful, who is independent, who looks after her family, runs the household. You know, she's a very powerful, strong woman in the 3D reality. Wow, Knight of Wands, Wounded Warrior. So that's the opposite polar, opposite yeah. of what this is. Yeah. yeah. And so, so I really get like the wounded warrior energy. This is the one this is. And, and I don't mean, I, I don't really like this phrase, but it's what's coming up. So I'm going to throw it out there, but it's almost like that, that victim consciousness around not being able to move forward about yeah. I'm stuck. I don't know how to move forward. And it's yeah. like, you move forward just like any other thing you take one day at a time, one step at a time. Um, but if you stay in this wounded warrior energy, you're, you're never, you're not going to get, get to that, uh, mother earth queen of pentacles energy. And so we have to be conscious that we can take our power back, um, and live Absolutely. our lives and never wait. Like I, waiting is just not, it's not a vibrant, juicy energy at all. Yeah. Um, so Jamie Jane wants to know what is the DM energy towards the divine feminine? Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and see. How is he feeling right now towards the divine feminine? So I got Spark of Inspiration, the Ace of Wands. Um, I, I see this more of a Kundalini awakening. What? <laughs> wow. The synchronous, the way that they're flowing is amazing. Are you kidding yeah. me? Wow. Yeah. So what... I feel with this is just, um, you know, moving forward, there's like an energy of action, of inspiration, of creativity. Um, yeah, you know, and also has to do with spirituality as well, right? Um, I feel this, this flame, this one flame with this card. Yeah. Right. And then you kind of pull the, the uh, emperor, the yang card, and it's like, a mirror in a way, right? We got the divine masculine and feminine energy, but yeah. she, she was asking about the divine masculine. Yeah. You make him, like the divine feminine makes him feel like the yang. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, I get that. Like, <clears throat> I feel like um, a lot of the feminines really spoke to the the king, the emperor, in mm -hmm. their masculines, and, and the masculines felt that. They feel that, that you were speaking to their divinity and they mm -hmm. feel that and it inspired them. It made them want to be better. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so Miss Y, 
If the divine feminine, after meeting their divine masculine, feels such a strong connection that they don't want to have sex with anybody else but their divine masculine, then <clears throat> why the divine masculine won't feel the same connection and still wanting to explore their options and have sex with other women? What do divine masculines need to heal so that they would feel the same way? Mm -hmm. And want to have sex with the divine feminine only. Um, this isn't about sex. This connection absolutely is not about sex. Um, and it's not about union. It's not about the physical reality. It's about consciousness and awareness and awakening and expansion. So all these questions about whether or not he's sleeping with somebody else is even, you know, should he just be with you? Those are all physical questions. You know, and again, it's kind of speaking to your blockages. Yeah. yeah. Not feeling worthy of the connection. Right. Yeah. And that's uh, the, not all, I mean, twin flames are not primarily about sex. You know, I think that we need to be very clear. You, you just said that, but I, the way I kind of phrase it is like, you don't hear people asking like about whether like Jesus and Mary Magdalene were having like rock and sex. People don't talk about that because it was not about that. It was about mission. It was about purpose. What'd you get? You're waiting a little bit there. I got uh, contemplation again with spiritual union, the two of cups. So again, what I felt immediately with the seven of pentacles was that blockage. You're sitting there contemplating, you're thinking, and it's actually stopping the movement mm -hmm. forward in the 3D reality. And then the spiritual union is that connection, that mirror with your twin flame, feeling them in the 5D reality. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it basically repeating what I was saying earlier, you know, you're what worrying about what's happening in the 3D with somebody else and sexuality and all that kind of stuff is causing a blockage. You are in union in the 5D reality. Yeah. You know, you yeah. just got to be aware of that. Uh, and it doesn't yeah. have to be. Wow. Morning and loss. Right. And that's what I'm feeling like moving through that and like letting go of expectations. Yeah and releasing and expanding beliefs your, your belief system so you're not continuing to be stuck um worrying about i and and i'm just going to be perfectly frank like i uh, i understand that i am that began in the beginning where i was like i can't imagine like wanting to be with somebody else or feeling that way but when you do your healing it shifts and you don't feel that same way anymore you, you open yourself up to having new experiences and so if yeah. you're feeling that like oh i cannot imagine being happy or having sex or anything with anybody but my masculine well that might that's just an indication that that's an area that needs some um, loving attention yeah exactly that's perfect so erica hey erica i got to meet erica in person last week um actually what it is today thursday so like just a few days ago <laughs> but erica wants to know in what area do we need the most healing Okay. As a whole, as a collective. Yeah. Or as a feminine. As a collective. And I got the throat chakra right off the jump. Communication. Yeah, absolutely. Um, communicating, speaking your truth, standing your, standing your ground, um, being vocal, not letting yourself be silenced. That's really a huge thing is like not re refusing to allow other people or other energies to keep you quiet. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I got the, the seed of intention, the eight hundred gold. Um, I think what I'm seeing with this is accepting gifts, um, accepting, you know, a higher view of yourself, um, you know, compliments, um, just opportunities and, and seeding those intentions so that they'll grow and blossom, um, you know, in the future, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah I think that that's oh, a, oh. Oh. Well, the the, uh, the cupid's arrows, <clears throat> which is the eight of wands, and so that's about communication, um, giving of yourself, mm -hmm. um, sending those positive energies out into the universe and having it return to you mm -hmm. as gifts. That's amazing. So beautiful. Yeah. Or it could literally mean texting, <laughs> talking. <laughs> Uh, speaking up. <clears throat> okay, so Melly. Ah, oh my God, that's my girlfriend. Oh, Melly. Hi, Melly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so weird. Oh. Okay, 
I just have a general question for guidance to get on the right track for everything. Okay. I just have a general question for guidance. To get on the, okay, so she, I guess she wants to know how to get on track with everything. Um, general guidance, okay. So let's just pull a couple of cards and see what comes up. <laughs> And I think it's basically the same question as uh, the one earlier with Erica. Uh, free spirit. So this is a page of wands. So it will. <laughs> so the nine of swords. Wow. Yeah. So the very opposite energies here. So the, you can see how excited this person is about life, about the, you know the future, about starting something new. Um, and it's just having that vitality, that energy. Um, mm -hmm. You know. It's also great news, great communication, but I think this is just viewing life uh, in a playful, innocent way. Yeah. Right? Like, and, instead of and, being and, in that. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like releasing this, releasing this waking nightmare, because this is like mental, it's not necessarily a mental prison, but it's like sometimes you have to get out of your own way. And sometimes you have to be like, yeah, this sucks. And there's a lot of pain, uh, but I'm going to move forward and I'm going to get out of bed. And I'm not talking about people who have like clinical depression or anything like that. Cause that's ridiculous, right? That that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about people who are just struggling and needing to, um, take action to move out of their own way so they can get into that free spirited, um, vibrant living energy again. Um, absolutely. I'm looking at this next question, and it's asking questions. For, it, it seems more specific, um, mm -hmm. like a personal question. So I think I'm going to skip that. Okay. Um, and yeah, I don't know much about the uh, astrological chart. Yeah, I don't know much about astrology either. But it's like um, this is specific to some to one person's astrological chart. So I think I'm going to skip that one. Um, and go down to vibe with Steph, which who asks, how do we know who our divine counterpart is? I've thought it's been several different people over the course of the last few years. <clears throat> so I think that that speaks to this desire that people have that they're like, I want to meet my twin flame. And I'm like, why? <laughs> it's not, you know, it's not a walk in the park. It's a challenging experience. I'm kidding. But, um, you yeah, know, sorry. Sorry. I dropped one in my car. Yeah. Anybody ever want to choose to be <laughs> doing this? Um, like we were talking earlier before we came on camera, uh, as far as the channels, ha the way they happen, it, it, it came to us. It, you know, we didn't expect it. We didn't plan it. I had no idea how to do tarot. I was actually really drawn to the art. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So the high priest was at the bottom of the chair. So, this is being a spiritual leader. It's having your vibe tribe. It's connecting with everybody. Um, so when my twin flame came along, I was in that same kind of vibration where I wasn't expecting it. My life is perfect. I don't want anything new. You know what I mean? So it comes along when you least expect it and it rocks your world. It shakes you up. It yeah. kicks you in the ass, you know? <laughs> so, that energy that vibration is a perfect mirror of you mm -hmm. and i think that's the way that you can kind of connect with it and, and yeah. recognize it as your twin flame because it, it's so much like you. and they can actually you know mimic um false twin flames as well and then you kind of look at your false twin flames and you go oh wow okay they were exactly like my twin flame but you know, there's some major differences, like they were freaks or, you know, asses or what have you, you know what I mean? So you're going to have a lot of par karmic partners and, and, and soulmate connections, mm -hmm. but there's only divine masculine. Right, right. And, and I got this. the high priest awakens you. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Again, I got this. The, it's interesting because I, it fell out earlier and I put it back in and shuffled again and then it came back again. So this is a really strong message. Um, yeah. I feel, and I'm trying to, I'm, I might pull a clarifier. I'm going to actually pull a clarifier. And I got the ice queen. So we have these two cards, which to me is just speaking to mm -hmm. how, you know, it is your um, divine counterpart is that, oh, I feel like what this is saying is that any of those energies that you might've had in the past where you felt um, a lot of mourning and loss that it kind of just, I, I mean, it kind of breaks through the ice. That's the way, that's the way I can describe it. It's like, um, mm -hmm. 
things that, at least in my own experience, like traumas and pains and ways that I protected myself in the past, just all kind of like, it was like, it just thought away. And like, literally I'm talking about like, you know, that there were things and, uh, situations that I even painful stories that are things I had forgotten about that came up to be healed. Yeah. And I've been describing it like this, like I literally said before, like, I feel like, like I've been thawing out like places that were in pain, places that absolutely. I just froze, just kind of like warmed up and started flowing again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, that's kind of reminiscent of the three of swords in the young show Zen, uh, mm -hmm. deck, right. Where, you know, they talk about men not being able to cry. Um, you know, they're, they're frozen, that kind of thing. So tears are warmth, are healing, you know, and it, it melts yeah. all that hard exterior. Um, so, but you need to be able to, to feel those emotions to, yeah. to work through them and then finally release them. Yeah. Um, I was, I was feeling a lot of judgment with the Queen of Swords, the Ice Queen as well, you know, judging um, your divine masculine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that judgment is actually creating pain within yourself. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so where are we? Um, we're at Rebecca. Oh, we are? Okay. Um, hello and thank you. Will our divine masculine figure out our soul and divine special relationship just as we the divine feminine? I you know, again, I think that's judgment and that assuming that they're not as awake as we are or at the same level as we are on our journey. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a blockage also. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I agree with Sherry on that. I feel like that we're, that's an assumption that they don't understand, that they don't know. Um, and we don't know. They, they could very well have that. They just don't experience or express it the same well, same way. And I feel like um, for those that are on a twin flame journey, that this really did uh, trigger a major transformation for this person. And yeah. so um, whether they're saying it to you or not, whether they're coming to you and being like, you're my twin flame, doesn't matter. Um, mm -hmm. They can recognize and see a divine connection, even if they don't label it that way. Right. Exactly. And what I'm seeing with that as well, it's, you know, like you were saying, the transformation from the caterpillar to the butterfly. Yeah. Um, our soul, it opens up and we become something completely different as a result of this journey. And then I also got the Nirvana card again. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, this is a completion of the, the fool's journey. It's arriving at that final moment. Um, and so, what I'm feeling with those two cards together, it's kind of pointing to her personal journey. She needs to let go, you know, death of the ego, death of your old identity, and just release any any past. Um, and you will arrive at that union, you know, when it's supposed to happen. Don't worry about what's happening with them, how far along they're, they're, they are in the journey, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get that too. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so somebody asked how, how hard are the DMs getting hit with synchronicities? I think we've already answered that. Do you feel like that one's been? Absolutely. Over and over again, for sure. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and pass that one um, because I don't, I feel like we've talked about that. Um, so Camilla's question is working on, I've been working on detaching from my um, DM and tapping into the marrying my personal masculine side with my feminine side. I've had anxieties about growing self-centered and so I'm going to kind of just summarize. Um, how can I forgive and heal? Okay. But that's also a personal question. <laughs> okay. So let me just skip to the end. How do we heal parental blocks in a twin flame journey? Um, which is also the same thing. I mean, basically what, we're, what, what it all comes back down to is releasing judgment and forgiveness. Um, forgiveness is not about necessarily welcoming people back into your life. If a person is toxic and unhealthy, including parents, they don't need to be in your life. Mm -hmm. But you do, it's about forgiveness and releasing and letting, um, you know, letting the d divine work things out on your behalf. Yeah. See, yeah, that's a, the whole thing. We are conditioned to respond in certain ways. We act out in certain ways in the 3D reality. We talk in certain ways because of our parents. 
Um, and again, it's about stripping all that away, you know, and realizing where you are actually acting out, uh, you know, and changing that, becoming something different. Right. So here's yeah. interesting because I just pulled the, the lovers for this. Oh. And so there's two messages oh. that are coming through. And the first one is that you make a choice. Okay. I, I know that, and I say that and it sounds super easy and I don't mean it to sound that, that it's not easy, but it is simple. You choose to forgive, to release, and to move forward. Um, what's coming to mind right now is the movie The Shack or the book. I've never, um, if you've never read it, I won't spoil it for you, but it's like the long and short of it is that you, you have to make a decision. And sometimes you have to make that decision every single day to forgive and to forgive and to forgive. Um, and then you step into the space of love where you, once you move through that, you ascend into love and you're able to offer even people that hurt you um, mm -hmm. love vibes instead of like anger or bitterness. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so easy to walk around and just be rude people and angry. You know, it's so much harder to be in a space of love and forgiveness and, yeah. you know, trusting, you know, you think everybody's out to get you, that kind of thing. And I think that's why the zero point card showed up again. You know, being in the now, being in the moment, no expectations whatsoever. Returning to innocence, purity, childlike. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, uh, number three, Wilson, how long after a karmic relationship do you usually meet with true love? And I, again, you're, you're, you have expectations. Yeah. Uh, it happens when it happens. So I'll pull a card for you. We have intention again. Wow. You know, cards seem to be just repeating repeating mm -hmm. um and then at the bottom of, of the deck we have the knight of pentacles so slow and steady um so what i see here is like an offer a gift um, there's somebody coming towards you uh but it's a very slow um, you know long-term kind of thing mm -hmm. so i think you know it's pointing more to personal kind of um, reading here <laughs> but again when you have expectations you end up pushing that further away so deal with your karmic energy release that let that go and you got another kind of gold card there student right? yeah which is to me saying it's like when you've learned what you need to learn that's when it happens <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. when you've healed that you've released that karma because you don't want the thing if people always say like you can't create karma in twin flame relationships i don't believe that i believe that if you if you haven't resolved karma from old stuff you bring that into your next relationship that's why um it's important to heal between relationships like you know serial monogamous people that jump from relationship to relationship they carry all of that baggage with them into the next yeah and um loneliness be with yourself you have yeah. to love being by yourself and yeah. that energy that positive energy of you know self-worth and confidence you know being on your own that will attract your true love into your life yeah um and so the last question was um how how can we know for certain that we've met our twin and i think we've already covered that um and i would say i would say this that there, there it's just an inner knowing um i don't believe in like i don't believe in readers that say that they can confirm twin flame connections that's just not something that i've ever vibed with at all um and so i, I it's just something it's an inner knowing you just mm -hmm. know that you know that you know that you know <laughs> yeah exactly you know, by the way, it makes you feel, you know, you, you've never felt true, unconditional love, you know, unless it's with your twin flame. Right. You're really, right. You know, you get into marriage, that's a contract that you're signing up with somebody else and it's a chain linking yeah. you to somebody else. <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, you know, twin flame should never get married because that's all about the 3D, it's about owning each other. You know, it happens when it happens and you'll know it. Yeah. And I agree with what you're saying about the unconditional love. It's like <clears throat> you're like your twin flame can like do things and piss you off to, to no end. Um, but there's always that chain of love and, and connection that you don't, it's not that you don't get hurt or angry or anything like that, but you always love them. Yes, absolutely. And I just pulled out the, the transformation card again, the death card, along with the hangman, which is perspective shift. Um, so what I'm seeing with this is that a twin flame, again, it will trigger you. Um, you feel your lowest lows, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it pulls up all these, you know, issues from the past. So that's what the death card is, is, 
you know, putting an end to your past, to the ego, to uh, karmic relationships and switching perspectives, seeing the bright side of things, seeing, um, you know, but also releasing, letting go and surrendering. It might also require a self-sacrifice, but just that perspective shift, transformation into a different person completely. Yeah. That's what the twin flame connection ultimately helps you to do. Yeah. Wow. Right. And I feel like this, this sets you, I mean, I don't know about you, but I felt like I got like set free from a mental prison with mine where I saw things. I mean, my, I can't even, it's like, I saw the world in a different light. I saw uh, myself in a different light and the world and my experiences. And it was like, I literally felt like I, I suddenly saw all the ways that I'd kept myself stuck. Absolutely. And, like, small, yeah. and not yeah. living my best life and all of that. And I, and it's like, I see it now. I can't like, it's tempting to want to go back sometimes to the, to, you know, where you don't see the world. This is like, um, I feel like meeting your twin flame is like that moment where in the matrix where Neo is sitting there with Morpheus and he's like, you know, you can take the blue pill and go back to your world. And it's just like, you've never meeting your twin flame is taking the red pill and going down the rabbit hole. And suddenly it's like, everything looks different. Absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly. It's an entire uh, like paradigm shift around everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah. So that's it for our questions. I hope that everybody enjoyed this. Um, Sherry, I'm going to link your, I'm going to send you this video too, so you can post on your channel, but I'll link all your stuff. But um, just in case, let people know how they can find you and get your awesome cards because they're now for sale. Um, okay. So if you're interested in ordering the cards, you can reach me at sherry off at hotmail.com. Uh, of course, the link will be below in the description box. Um, so yeah, uh, my channel is No Fucks Giving Crew. <laughs> I always laugh when I say it. I don't know why. It's just hilarious to me. So uh, short is NFGC Tarot. Um, so yeah. Um, and um, as far as the costs and stuff like that, it, it'll be in the information below as well. Awesome. But, yeah. Thank Yay, you so thank much. You. Yeah, I'm so excited. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and for sending in your questions. And if we decide to do this again, um, we'll be sure to post all that info before, below. So I'm going to click the stop recording button, and then uh, you and I can just kind of wrap up, okay? Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Cheers.